Hey guys, the uh, just wanted to show you the latest Icon Flybarless unit um, case design, along with some of the uh, newest software updates. Uh, you see the new case has like a slope front edge, and the if you saw the older design, uh, it was kind of a right angle. Um, also, there's no longer uh, any adhesive used to connect the two. There's four screws in the back, uh, and that's it. It's a lot cleaner looking, much nicer. Um, also updated in the hardware, um, they now have reverse polarity uh, protection and what this means is um, when you plug in a servo uh, into any of the slots um, it's no longer possible to accidentally plug it in uh, backwards and then damage the unit. You can still plug them in backwards um, but now it doesn't actually cause any kind of damage and um, it's, it's really robust. Also there's protection on this uh, top slot which is the channel 456 bind slot um, and this is the, the top one you see up here um, and you, you know if you accidentally plug in your back to there, it's not going to damage the unit. What they basically did was add some uh, resistors uh, in series on each of the signals. Uh, these are the signals that are uh, being driven out by the, the processor that's inside the icon. And now if you uh, plug something in backwards, you're not going to damage it uh, in any way. So, um, so nice updates. Uh, and next I'll uh, show you some of the improvements in the software. So let's have a look at the new features in both the Icon firmware uh, as well as the GUI. Uh, first we have the flight counter. Uh, flight counter counts the number of flights that you've done uh, and it also accumulates the total amount of flight time that you've had on the model. Uh, it's intelligent in that it doesn't start counting flights uh, until you've powered the unit on and throttle has gone over 10%. So if you just power on and off the Icon, uh, it's not going to start adding numbers of flights that don't actually exist and flight time doesn't actually start until throttles over 10%. Uh, so it should be really accurate uh, in terms of measuring uh, uh, how many flights and, and uh, number of flight hours on the model. Um, next is the uh, fixed tail gain. So some guys don't really want to dump a channel if you have like a six or seven channel uh, transmitter. So don't want to dump a channel uh, on just setting the tail gain. So now you can go ahead and just set it in software uh, and uh, not use one of your receiver channels. Um, we've added support for lots of new receiver types, including SBUS2, SJHOT, SRXL, PPM SUM. Uh, the GUI now has a new import capability. Uh, before, if you wanted to load a new profile, you had to load everything. So now, um, if you had a profile that you think the tail was better, you could, you know, you could just import just you know, parts of it, and I'll, I'll give you, I'll show you how the new import function works. Um, uh, there's now uh, some cyclic or pitch pumping uh, when the unit initializes before you had to go look at the status LED on the on the unit and sometimes you would mount the unit where you couldn't see it um, so now uh, the cyclic or the, the the swash will pump up and down similar to some other units uh, so you know that the system's ready to fly and one of the big new features is of course the auto rotation bailout uh, and I've done some videos on uh, how to make that work if you want to use a, a Castle ESC. So here's a, a quick overview of some of the new GUI features um, that were just released. Uh, first we have um, some options when you load from your configuration file to just do partial loading. Um, so if I go in here and just pick some old configuration file, um, you'll see here that now I can do load common, load setup one, load setup two, load setup three. Uh, so this lets me, let's say I lost a setup or I messed around with it and it's no longer uh, flying the way my golden setup worked. Um, I can now just pick that one setup to load in and it doesn't overwrite maybe some of the common things I've been tuning in the meantime, like governor, et cetera, this kind of thing. Uh, so this is really handy, something you'll definitely uh, use, I'm sure. Um, Next, uh, we have uh, support for a uh, flight counter, which is really, really cool. Uh, if I go to uh, View Advanced, uh, now you'll notice this new little uh, uh, box here that says Flight Count and Flight Time. And so what this does is um, every time you power on the unit, throttle goes over 10%, uh, you'll see the flight count increment. And also when throttle is over 10%, flight time is accumulated. Um, so this is really handy. Um, you know, one thing that I will probably use it for uh, is a maintenance schedule. So if I think that, well, you know, after uh, 100 flights, I, or the manufacturer says 100 flights, replace the belt. Um, so now I can actually go in here and say, oh, I've done 100 flights, I ought to go replace that belt. At least have an idea of how many flights you have. Um, I know a lot of guys like look at how many marks they have in their LiPo or this kind of thing. This is way better. So um, really handy feature. Uh, the next feature uh, that they've added is bailout. And so if I go into uh, advanced common uh, spool up, you'll see that now there's some new uh, bailout parameters, 
parameters in here like bill out timeout uh, bill out ramp and then also in the setups um, there is an option on the governor to use governor but now there's also governor use bailout so so certain setups can have governor uh, can have bailout and some setups can, uh, do not so if you uh, go online for more information on how to use this um, or you can check out my videos um, on how I used, how I set it up with Castle, uh, which actually applies to other ESCs as well. Um, other new feature here um, is the option to basically lock the tail gain in software. Um, this is really nice, especially if you have a six channel receiver and you still want to be able to select uh, banks. And so you'd have to, before you'd have to choose between getting tail gain um, or actually be able, being able to select uh, the active bank. Uh, so now you can basically just set it in the software and then be able to um, change the gain by changing the, the bank that you've selected. So to do that, um, under uh, advanced common receiver, um, gain, uh, you say set as a uh, set set in software, and then if you go to setup one tail, uh, you'll see that now I can have a, a slider here that I can go ahead and just uh, set that uh, tail gain, and then set up two exact you know etc. I can set the tail gain so I can have three different tail gains that are uh, set to each uh, setup bank. Uh, next, let me go back to the basic menu here, um, and if I go to the receiver types. You'll see that uh, some new receivers have been added, including SBUS2, uh, SRXL, PPM sum, etc. So um, a lot more support for uh, different brands of uh, receivers now. So that's pretty much it. Um, a lot of new features. Uh, I think this is a great release um, and uh, a lot more fun. Really, I love the new bailout. Something that I use a lot, um, and uh, I think you know more people should do auto. So I think this will get people doing some autos when they can uh, certainly bail out of them. Thanks for listening.